What's up, guys? Now, what makes a scientist? Being a scientist is not just about mixing chemicals in a lab or playing with instruments. It's about contributing to the advancement of humanity with knowledge you discover. To truly discover new knowledge and call yourself a scientist, you have to, one, observe nature around you and notice something unusual or a strange behavior. Two, make a guess as to explain why this unusual thing or behavior. Three, working with your guess, perform experiments to understand why matter or nature behaves that way. Four, publish the results from your experiments and how you performed the experiments. Five, repeat your experiments to confirm your results. Six, publish a theory or a principle that explains why matter and nature behaves the way your findings say they behave. It is important that you follow these steps if you want to contribute to science or become a scientist. It is not everyone who studies the composition and properties of matter that is a chemist or a scientist. You remember the alchemists from our previous video? Well, they also studied matter, but they did not make much contribution to science. This was not just because they were only interested in making gold and becoming rich. It was because they did not follow something called the scientific method. Now, what is the scientific method? Well, actually, I just briefly explained that to you, but we would need to explain it even better. There are six steps to the scientific method, and we'll take them one after the other. These are the steps. We'll start with the first one, observation. If you know what this word means, then you might understand this step already. It involves noticing something strange or unusual in your environment. To do this, you need to be a very curious person. Curious people always notice different or unusual things and would often ask questions about it. Have you ever noticed anything unusual in your environment? Something that makes you ask some questions? Well, that means you're a curious person and that would make you a good scientist. But before you jump to the next step, you need to do a little research to be sure that another scientist has not made the same observation and answered the question that you are asking. You could use the internet to ask the question and see what answers other scientists have given to that question. If there's an answer from a scientist already, it means that question has an answer already. If there is none, well, that means you can become the scientist to find the answer to that question. And you need to go to the next step, hypothesis. The word hypothesis simply means an intelligent guess. It's a guess you make based on things you already know about a matter. So it is more than just an ordinary guess. As you study science, you would find out that your guesses would get more intelligent. For instance, in your very first class, you learned that potato gets soft in boiling water because it contains sugar in the form of carbohydrates and sugar dissolves in water. If you then observe that yam also gets soft in boiling water, you could guess that yam also contains a lot of carbohydrates and that would be a correct guess. So the second step in the scientific method is to make an intelligent guess or a hypothesis based on the knowledge of science that you already have. The next step is to test your hypothesis with experiments. In this step, you need to take some of the materials you're observing to a laboratory and perform tests or experiments on them. These would help you determine whether the guess you made about the strange behavior of the material you have at hand is true or not. This means that your method of experiments must be designed to test your hypothesis. It is also very helpful if your experiments use measurements and calculations. Doing your experiments this way would help you move to the next step, results. If your experiments confirm that your hypothesis is true, it means you have a positive result. If your experiments do not confirm your hypothesis, it means you have a negative result. Either way, you would need to move on to the next step, analysis. But what happens in the next step depends on whether you have a negative result or a positive one. If you have a negative result, you would have to find another hypothesis that explains the unusual thing you initially observed, that is, make another intelligent guess. But if your results are positive, you would need to analyze them carefully so that it tells you everything you need to know about your unusual behavior or property you have observed. 
analysis is a very important step, and it is especially important if there are other scientists that are working on the same hypothesis on the same observation. This is because your results need to be reproducible. This means that another scientist should perform the same experiment you performed and get the same results. If you had the only scientist working on that hypothesis, you would have to perform the experiments over and over to make sure that the values or results of all your experiments are similar. If they are not, you would also have to change your hypothesis and consider your initial results negative. If your analyses are positive, however, and any other scientist working on the same hypothesis on the same observation gets similar results, then you can move on to the final step of the scientific method, theory. A theory is a scientifically acceptable explanation of a phenomenon, a behavior in nature. In the first step, observation, you observed something strange or unusual. And after experiments and analysis, you now have an explanation. You now publish the results of your experiments, the method you used to obtain those results, and the explanation or theory so that other scientists can read it and agree with you. If your results on analysis has been all positive, your theory would be the same as your initial hypothesis. If there have been negative results on analysis, the theory would be different from your initial hypothesis, but would be the same as the new hypothesis that you have used. Either way, you have succeeded in finding out something new in science. This may lead to new inventions that would make your life better. So that is how anyone can become a scientist. You too can become a scientist if you are curious enough to make important observations, make intelligent guesses, perform experiments, ensure your results are correct, and find an explanation. Anyone can tr contribute to science this way, and you should try too. Find something unusual or strange that bothers you and start asking questions about them. It is likely other scientists have already found the answer, but even this would be interesting as you can read the scientist's explanation and even the way he performed the experiments to get his results. And if no scientists have the answer to your question, well, roll up your sleeves and get to work in a lab. Being a scientist is fun. In the next quest, we'll be considering the different areas you can work as a scientist if you focus on chemistry. See you then.